in this video let's solve the uh, question of quantitative analysis of question paper 3 3 that is practicals paper of 9701 chemistry and uh, we have already solved many other types of practicals like titration enthalpy qualitative analysis etc we have also overall seen what are the important tips of practicals paper question 3 uh, question paper 3 so in this we'll particularly solve the uh, quantitative analysis question and we will also see some important tips related to such questions when we are solving que uh, such question in the practicals paper so here is one of the quantitative analysis question let's see what is here uh, some uh, metal carbonates occur in a basic form which means that the metal hydroxide is also present. The formula of one form of basic zinc carbonate is given here, the formula is given here which is an hydrated. So you can see there is an XH2 given here where X is an integer. Now in this experiment you will carry out a thermal decomposition to find out the relative formula mass of MR. Uh, and the value of x for a sample of a basic zinc carbonate. So, what are we going to do in this experiment is we are going to find out the relative formula mass of this compound here and we will also find the value of x which is an integer for an hydrated basic zinc carbonate. The formula is given here. Okay. So, Fa1 is a basic zinc carbonate given here the formula and the method to follow this is given here you can always pause the video and read the whole of uh, the procedure i'm not going to uh, spend much of the time in reading the procedure so what i generally do is that let's find out what are we supposed to note down in our reading so first thing which we are going to note down in our reading is weigh the empty crucible with its lid and record the mass okay now next is weigh the crucible with lid and fa1 and record the mass so the second read is second thing which you are going to note down is the crucible lid and fa1 earlier we did with the empty crucible with it lids right now what are we going to do next is we are going to heat it gently and etc for four minutes you can read the whole procedure the next is uh, when the crucible is cool weigh the crucible with it leads and the content means that you have to note down again the mass with it contents of fa1 but then that's after the heating so no, no more fa1 is remaining it has decomposed into some other compound and maybe the hydrated water has evaporated out okay so next time after heating and cooling we're going to weigh the crucible with it leads and the content and record the mass Again, we are going to heat it, replace the lid again when the crucible is cool. Reweigh the crucible with it lids and the content and record the mass. So, this is the third time we are going to note down and then calculate and record the mass of FA1 used. Calculate and record the mass of residue obtained after the two times of heating. So, these are all the points or the readings which you have to note down and record. So, for that you need to have a record table and that's why they have given a space for results and I have drawn an empty table for you people so that you can note down. Now, here is that table. So, if we find out the first, what is the first thing which we need to note down is empty crucible with it lit. So, first let notes down what is, uh, how do we note it down okay so first make a table with two columns content and mass don't forget writing the unit that is mass has to be noted in grams right so the first which we are going to note down is the empty crucible empty crucible plus lid that's what we are going to note down and that's we will uh, note down the mass after weighing this and in the table here okay the next is weigh the crucible lid and fa1 so what we are going to do is again crucible plus lid and plus fa1 that's what we are going to note down in our next row now again if we see it's written after cooling weigh the crucible lid and the content so what we are going to do is crucible next uh, noting down of reading is crucible plus lid 
plus content after first heating that is what I am noting down here after first heating ok. Next again after reheating we are going to heat it second time again reweight crucible lid and the content after second heating. So, that is also I am going to note down crucible plus lid plus content after second heating that is the next column which we are going to note down obviously you can make a table little bigger and note down all the things in a better way ok. Again then we have to note down it is given here in the last two that record the mass of FA1 used. So, the mass of FA1 FA1 used right and then mass of the residue obtained. So, mass of residue that is what we can note down in the mass. Now, understand what I am giving you a reading, but this reading are all you can say virtual reading you might not get the same reading when you perform the practical, but yes I am giving you some virtual readings for each of this so that I can explain you the calculation also and so I am writing here is 25.96 gram ok. If I add FA1 here then the weight will increase and that is going to be say 28.18 gram. Now, I am already written the gram in the table on the top. So, I do not need to mention gram here in the table because the unit are already, already given on the top of the column where we have written the mass in grams right. So, the next is the crucible plus lead plus content on forced heating. Now, obviously, if we have heated it has decomposed water has evaporated out then the mass should reduce. So, I am giving you it is 27.65 gram. Now, understand I have noted down all my readings to two decimal places why because my weighing balance gives me a two decimal place uh, reading for each of these contents right. So, I need to note it down to two decimal place obviously. Then the next mass after second heating now second heating again some of the mass would have decomposed and again the reading may go down and I am giving you a next reading that is 27.47 gram. Ok, now mass of FA1 use. Now, if you want to find out mass of FA1 use, we are going to subtract this two reading, then only we get the mass of FA1. Why? Because it is the total of crucible lead and FA1 that is this second part. The first one is crucible and lead only. So, if we subtract it, we will get the mass of FA1 used at the starting of the experiment. So, if we subtract it, I am going to get it as 2.22 gram. You can subtract it and find it out on your own. That is 2.22 gram. Okay. Now, next if you want to find out mass of the residue. Residue is what after heating whatever is left in our crucible. So, for that we need to subtract the first reading and the content of the uh, mass or after second heating that is second heating and cooling. So, if we remove out the mass of empty crucible and lead from our uh, this uh, reading we will get only the content left over after second heating. So, that is the mass of the residue. So, if we subtract these two we get it as a 1.51 gram. So, now as you can see from the question we kept on reading uh, what do we have to note down and we kept on making the table content and that is how we make the table. So, understand keep on reading the question keep on finding out that what do you have to note down and keep on making a table accordingly and then keep on again reading weighing and note down the mass every time that is how I always tell my students to do it that read it the question and again again and find out that what do you have to weigh, weigh it and same thing you need to keep on noting down every time. So, keep on reading the question and find out that what do you have to note down in the table. So, I think my last two uh, rows are extra we can remove it but yes let us go ahead with the next part of the question. 
the next part of the question is calculation calculation is here now they are given an equation for the thermal decomposition of the hydratic basic zinc carbonate the formula is given here the equation is given here you can see that the zinc oxide the zinc oxide is formed as one of the residue carbon dioxide is the gas which goes off again water also goes off or evaporates when it is heated right so whatever is left over as a residue in our experiment is zinc oxide fine so let is uh, let's see what do we have to calculate first is calculate the amount in moles of zinc oxide formed after heating now what is zinc oxide that's the residue so if you want to find out the moles of a zinc oxide then we need to have mass upon its mr okay so if we find out what's the residue we have already found out here it is 1.51 so mass of residue is 1.51 upon its mr a relative molecular mass of zinc oxide now what is that zinc has a relative mass of 65.4 plus oxygen that is 60 so that's why we get as 1.51 upon 81.4 now if we divide that the number of moles what we get is 0 0.0186 now understand i'm noting down my reading to three significant figures three sf i'm noting down now that is necessary try your level best to note down your readings up to three sf okay let's go ahead hence Calculate the amount in moles of basic zinc carbonate in your sample of FA1. Now, we are going to find out the moles of basic zinc carbonate which is present in FA1. Now, FA1 is the starting substance which we have heated. So, if we have a look at the equation given here, this is FA1 which we have taken in our crucible and after heating we got the residue as zinc oxide. So, if we have already got the moles of zinc oxide, from the equation we can find out that the mole ratio of this basic zinc carbonate to the residue is 1 is to 3. That is if zinc oxide formed is 3 moles then it is zinc carbonate, basic zinc carbonate is 3 times less that is a 1. So, if we want to find out the moles of zinc carbonate, the basic zinc carbonate or I can say moles of Fa1 because I'm not going to write the whole formula. So we can write that is moles of zinc oxide divided by three. That's how we get the moles of Fa1. So in that case, now we can divide 0 0.0186 divided by three, and we get the answer as 0 0.00620. That's what we get the moles of basic zinc carbonate which we have taken as an fa1 at the starting of our experiment now let's see what is the next question next question is use your answer to b1 and your results in a to calculate the relative formula mass of that is mr of basic zinc carbonate fa1 now if you want to find out the mr we need to have mass upon its moles right so moles we have already calculated and in our table we have seen that the mass of fa1 used is 2.22 gram for our experiment so that is the mass yes let's substitute that the mass is 2.22 gram upon its moles moles we have already calculated in b1 that is 0 0.00620 so that's what are the moles of um, fa1 at the starting of the experiment so if we divide that we get the relative molecular mass from our formula and that is 358 358.06 grams that is the mr of the basic zinc carbonate which we have taken as in fa1 now use the periodic table to calculate the relative formula mass of only zinc carbonate dot 2 zn uh, oh twice that is zinc 
basic zinc carbonate but that is anhydrous the water has evaporated out now if we substitute all the mrs and um, uh, sorry uh, relative atomic mass of each and every element starting with zinc then we need to write as 65.14 plus carbon that is 12 plus oxygen now it is o3 so we need to multiply 3 into 16 right now that is for zinc carbonate plus now zinc hydroxide which is 2 mole so 2 into again zinc as 65.4 okay here by mistake i have written 14 uh, which has to be removed so 65.4 again now plus we have hydroxide as twice so again Two multiply by the mass of oxygen that is sixteen plus hydrogen that is one, and this is how we calculate the relative molecular formula mass of the basic zinc carbonate. And if we substitute all the values, calculate, we get it as three twenty four point two. That is three twenty four point two grams. now this is uh, the mass of only basic zinc carbonate now here the molecular mass which we have calculated in uh, b2 is the molecular mass that is relative formula mass of the hydrated basic zinc carbonate which is given here so here they have water and here we don't have any water the water is removed out right so if we subtract this value this two value we are going to get the mass of the water so it's given in question 4 sub question 4 that use your values to b3 and uh, b2 and b3 to determine the value of x in the formula of fa1 now what are we what we can do is if you want to find out the mass of x h2o we need to subtract these two value so what are we going to do is subtract 358.06 minus 324.2 if we subtract these two values we get the total mass of water used so you not used total mass of water evaporated out now if we subtract these two value obviously we get as 33. Eight six on subtraction. Now that's the mass of total mass of water evaporated. Now if you want to find out x, now what is x? It's the integer. So x let it remain integer. Now what is the relative formula mass of water? That's eighteen. So x into eighteen. Now if you want to find out x, obviously we need to divide thirty three point eight six divide by. 18 i hope it's very clear that x we have used here if we want to find out the relative formula mass along with the integer of water we need to multiply x with the relative uh, formula mass of water that is 18 16 plus 2 of hydrogen right so 18 so if we want to find out x take this 18 in the next side of the equal to that is in the division and we get approximate value as 1.88 now that is not an approximate it is 1.88 that's the integer we got now that is approximately equal to 2 we need to find it out as an integer so x is 2 we can note down here in our question x is equal to 2 so that's how we calculated the whole of uh, the uh, how many hydrated uh, how many water molecules were present in the hydrated compound plus we also find out the molecular mass of the fa1 used so this was the whole experiment to find out an x value and molecular mass of a compound with the help of quantitative analysis now i hope all the calculation and how to make the table is a very clear this is going to be very helpful for your practical paper and its calculations